Alright, welcome back to another EDH deck tech video. This is the last video I'll be recording tonight with these three decks I pulled out. I have been offline for quite some time and I've been trying to catch up. In the past year I've made and dismantled many decks and many of which I unfortunately didn't think to record. I've actually been living in a new place that has a lot of pets around here. Don't really like taking my cards out around all this. So, while I have the night to myself, I'm going to record what I have. Uh, this is a deck that I made when Eternal Masters was uh, released. They reprinted Rurik's Bladewing with a hideous new artwork that I think is disgusting. It is not the same Rurik's that we all have come to love. I used to play this in Standard, um, fighting the Dr. Tooth issue uh, when a green-red uh, Firecat Blitz whatnot deck. This is one of the first dragons that actually made people think of Shaven Dragon falling back in power. And of course, nowadays when you look at this, you really wonder why the hell anyone would think this was powerful. In his time, this was a powerhouse. Uh, Rourke's Bladewing here is a 6 mana, 3 red 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 for 6 5 flying haste. That's it. Like, uh, the best thing I like saying to people when I bring this out to the table is like, just take your time reading the card. It's confusing. Be careful. It's, it's flying and haste. So, yeah. Um, what this deck is, was essentially my homage to Rourke's. Half the deck is referencing or including old funny cards from the Scourge Onslaught block. But the deck is technically Dragon Tribal. The deck actually ended up turning into being quite a threat. Um, because Rourke's can come out very fast in this deck. He's come out on turn two a few times. He's killed people on turn three like two or three times. A very common average is a turn three or four Rourke's followed by a turn four or five death in the air. Um, there's just an absurd amount of mana rocks in this deck. There are, um, I think, 18 other creatures. They're all dragons. Then there are 12 mana rocks and three mana doublers in uh, 37 lands. So basically the deck is mostly dragons, mana to get the dragons, um, and some damage enhancement or double or whatnot. And that's what he's really good at. Um, I've changed the deck a little bit. I'm still missing two cards for this. I wanted to get a Wheel of Fortune. I just don't have enough to go around. And the Commander Sphere in this deck is supposed to be a mana vault, but I don't have enough. So let's go through the deck. Again, works. super simple. Six mana, six five, flying haste. He comes out attacking, and that's it. Uh, very frequently, he will kill someone on the following turn. Um, this is very similar to how my Acromas deck run, but since he has haste and he's a little bit cheaper, he tends to get faster kills. Um, let's set him over here. Of the dragon buddies that he has, Thunderbolt Hellkite, you may think, would be an early drop. Actually, I like holding him. Uh, people may get some kind of chump blocker for Rorix, so this gets rid of the chump blockers by tapping them down. Storm Breath is generically good. It's pro-white. Then we have Steel Hellkite. It's just a generic dragon. Scourge of the Throne. There's very few six drops in the deck that will compete for Rorix's spot if I can cast Rorix. This is one of them. So if I can cast him, and on the following turn I can cast Rorix, um, a lot of my mana rocks in this deck can hurt me, so I usually have no problem triggering Dethrone. This means that he can attack with a Dethrone trigger, and then I can untap both of them and do it again. It nets 24 damage because he get, he becomes a 6-6. Six, six. Uh, 24 damage on the turn after I cast him with Rorix. It's de devastating. <laughs> uh, Hellkite Tyrant is removal bait. People don't like seeing him connect. Flame Blast Dragon is more removal bait. Uh, Ryusi doesn't really do anything. He's more of a filler here. Again, this is more themey. Um, Hoarder, Horde Smelter Dragon. I don't have hardly any any interaction at all with the opponents. He's here just for that little bit of interaction. Hellkite Charger is here for another combat step. This deck technically needs more haste dragons because I do have a Dragon Storm in the deck. Um, he is one of the few haste dragons. Uh, another dragon I should probably put in here is Scourge of Valkus, so I can sequence some damage with that Dragon Storm. Uh, Balefire Dragon is another removal bait. Most of these dragons are, they need to be killed, otherwise their effect is devastating. Again, with the absurd amount of mana ramp in this deck, it is very easy for me to see any of my dragons around turn 4 or 5. Dragon Mage is great at refilling my hand because I just dumped all the mana rocks. Tyrant's Familiar is fantastic. This is a card I like following up at 
afterworks. When someone tries to put up a chump blocker, I can use him to remove the chump blocker with his lieutenant ability. Spawn of Thraxis is more of a late game dragon. It requires to have some mountains in play to actually have a meaningful effect. He burns on entry per the number of mountains to target creature player. Null Spine Dragon is a great follow-up to Rorix. After a good combat, this can be a great way to fill up my hand. Thunder Dragon is one of the few ways we have to interact with creatures. It just wipes non-flyers for three. Utvara is another card I like sequencing with Dragonstorm because even if I can only get one or two dragons, if I can get him and like a haste dragon or two, I can create a very devastating board presence. Usually requires a board wipe. <laughs> Scourge is another way of dealing with creatures on the board. And the last one is the Golden Odie when it comes to Dragonstorm is Bogodarn Hellkite. I like this artwork over the uh, dual deck one. Now again, the deck has a handful of spells here, broken down to types, so here's some damage and combat tricks. I wanted to run in Rage because this card's hilarious. No one expects this card, this is really stupid. The quote referring to Hulk is hilarious, or whoever. I think it's the Hulk, I don't care. And it's also, again, a lot of the cards in this deck are themed after the block, the Scourge or Onslaught block. So this is great. I mean, I can also put this on someone else's creature. There's three damage double, no, two damage doublers in this deck that work for everybody, one extra one that works for me. So this can actually be a devastating blow. Then we have Teamer Battle Rage, a great way to kill someone with works because it gives them trample. Seize the Day is a great card because to flash back and cast is seven mana exactly. So assume on once we hit six, we cast and attack with works. The next turn we attack with works, cast this, attack with works, flash back, attack with works. That's 24 damage with just the general and one card. Seize the Day is dumb. If you have a general that has over six power and some kind of evasion, get it. Savage Beating is another very dumb card. You can only cast it during combat, but for five or seven mana, you could either take an extra combat or double strike, or for that seven mana, both. Again, this is just a devastating game ending card. And again, that seven mana means it's one mana extra from just casting Rorix. Sargon's Triumph, they gave us a Dragon Tutor. This is fantastic. This usually goes and gets the Scourge of the Throne or just whatever dragon I need to answer or protect myself with. I like Scourge and I like uh, Thunderball Hellkite the most usually. Dragon Storms in the deck. Again, this is for efficiency. This should not be in the deck. There's no like ritualistic spells. There was a Searing Blade. Uh, no. Whatever the three, like two red gets you five red. That used to be in the deck because the Helter Works come out in turn two sometimes. Um, but some of the mana rocks are ritualistic in nature. The most storm count I've had on this was, I think, five or six or something. Um, most recently, like within the past few days, a buddy played a new deck that had Possibility Storm out, and I was able to sequence two spells, which doubles the Storm ability. But when I cast this, uh, it did not count itself, so I only got four dragons. But again, Dragon Storm, for nine mana, just go get whatever dragon you need, is still pretty good in a big red mono deck like this that can create so much mana. Insurrection is a generic game-winning card. I don't like this card, but it's in the Onslaught block. I mean, even the lands are all from Onslaught. Like, I, I have all matching mountains with the Onslaught symbol. I had to put this in here because that damn symbol. I just, I don't like this card. It's so, it, yes, it can win you dozens of games, but it's, it's not fun. Ruination, although I like, I love this card. <laughs> Again, mono red, I don't have very many non-basics. This can really nuke people. All those new four color commanders, you don't like Ruination. Uh, Wake of Destruction is an old pet card of mine. I've been pulling out of my collectible binder and putting in more decks. Essentially, this can remove a mono colored player from the game. Most common lands in multiplayer games are gonna be like forest or island, and that can set multiple opponents back Commune with Lava, this should have been the uh, Wheel of Fortune. Um, this is just a generic draw card advantage. Uh, you can do this on your first main phase and have the card for a full turn, like the next turn, or at instant speed you can do it into someone's turn so you can have the entire turn to decide what you have to do. Um, pretty good if you have a lot of mana. If you don't have a lot of mana, it's not that good. Um, I would not actually recommend it in this deck because this deck has so many expensive cards. So many dragons, a lot of these expensive spells, 
you're maybe going to be able to play one or two if you get X to five or so. A Wheel of Fortune is just better. Grab the Reins is another very small interactive spell. Interactive spell. I don't even know if that's a dragon or not. I think that's why I chose this one over like Word of Seizing. But it could like remove a spell, a creature. It could also like pseudo fog if someone's attacking you. It's just a good card. Slag Storm. Again, this is not a card I didn't want to put in here. This is kind of a filler. I think there's Flame Break. Yeah, those two. Essentially, because early game, I'm just playing Mana Rocks. I may with or works may die and these are two okay ways of stabilizing early game threats earthquakes is just a pretty good way it does not hurt flyers um it just like magma quake i think is in here yeah magma quakes in here too it does not hit flyers so these two are really good at wiping creatures but leave my dragons alone star storm although hits everything um, then we have All is Dust as a generic wipe. Blasphemous Act was removed because I did not want too many spells to kill my own dragons with. And Decree of Annihilation. <laughs> Again, this is in here because of the set, but I actually love this card. It's giving me an excuse to run this card. Um, cards like this tend to make people really hate you. But when it gets to the point where you have a mana doubler out, and you can float enough mana to cast this, and then you can cast works, you are very likely going to win the game. Uh, because after everything's exiled, graveyard hands, everything in play that's not enchantment or a planeswalker, if you have the mana floating and you can just cast works from your command zone, uh, you're, yeah. Oh, by the way, I got these really sweet sriracha sleeves. These sleeves I got for my um, Chandra deck, but I got an extra one, the 100th sleeve for him. Next, we're up to extra supportive enchantments. This is really good if I have Dragonstorm out because I don't have to search just haste dragons. It's like Scourge of Valkus. It can sequence damage on their entry. Then we have a plus three, plus three pump. This is a great way to make Roars not have to hit four times. Form of the Dragon is here because fuck you, I'm a dragon. Um, again, it's because of that set. This is a card that has almost always backfired and killed me. Dropping myself to five, not so good. You could think. Yeah, you're protected from being not attacked from ground creatures, but being at 5 life and EDH is not smart. Outpost Siege is here for drawing. Furnace for doubling the damage. Dictate for doubling the damage. And Gratuitous Violence for doubling the damage. And then we have Chandra. I need to pick up a lot of those new mono red. Like the new Chandra, the 4 ability Chandra, and the 6 drop Chandra need to be in here. Um, Sarkin is here because he himself can become a dragon. Uh, <laughs> literally Sarkin should not be in the deck uh, he's just he can become a dragon here's all the rocks um, I think only two of these uh, three of these are not mana rocks there's 12 mana rocks here uh, soul ring and wayfarer's ball bar one drops mana crypt that should be zero uh, mind stone it, I think this should probably be a cold steel heart because it generates red mana and I need that more for a early rorks the three red and rorks hurts that's why fire diamond is really good a nasty gold border grim monolith. Uh, Warren Power Stone comes by tapped. Basalt Monolith. Commander Sphere. This should be a mana vault. Coalition Relics. Really good at giving me the extra red for Rorks. Thrawn Dynamo and Guild Lotus. Then we have three doublers. We have an OG Gauntlet, a new Gauntlet, and a Caged Sun. Uh, these help us cast more than one big thing a turn. Then we have these two little guys for support. It gets us a Valakut. Could draw some extra cards. We're on to the lands. There are 37 lands in this deck. There is an Ancient Tomb. This is supposed to be coming out of the deck. I am getting very frustrated with the chaoticness and the irregularity that Temple of the False God creates, so it needs to come out. Can get us two mountains into play. This is great when you have Valakut up because you can hold up two bolts, essentially. A very slow card advantage, again, fun with Valakut. And Valakut, uh, the rest of these are mountains. There are 32 mountains. They are all the same Onslaught Mountain because I felt this was the one that looked the best with Rorx's artwork. <laughs> but yeah, this is my Rorx Blade Wing deck. If you see what this deck is trying to do, you could possibly take this entire shell, take out the crappy, huge overcosted creatures, and put a much more threatening general in the command zone. But you know what? Rorx is good enough. This guy can just straight up murk people out of nowhere. I have gotten him out on turn two a few times, and with lucky drops, specific drops, I have killed people on turn three. I think that's happened two, maybe three times already. Now, a turn three works is much more frequent, and killing people on turn four or five is extremely frequent. 
Um, and when people see this, they usually laugh. That's the best part. They don't expect works to do this. <laughs> Um, so, again, this is built entirely because that fucking imposter Rorks from Eternal Masters, that's not the fucking Rorks we know. Um, it looks literally like a dragon, that someone made the artwork for dragon, then they redrew extra wings on the back around. They, they don't even look like it's part of the artwork. That's not Rorks Bladewing. This is Rorks Bladewing, and if you love this dude, yeah, I love him too. But yeah, any feedback, I will be posting this in a few videos shortly. Uh, always welcome, and hope you have a good one. Cheers.